Hey everybody, have you ever wondered what frame format gives the fastest playback in After Effects? Let's find out. Hey, what's up everybody? Chad from Grayscale Gorilla here, where we give you the tools, training, and tutorials you need to make yourself a better motion designer. Today's video, we're all gonna, we're just gonna talk about image sequence formats. It started off on Twitter yesterday, where all these people, we started this big discussion. It was an amazing discussion. Got so many people involved in it. Everybody having their own opinion about which image sequence format they should render in After Effects to get the fastest playback and the smallest file size. So I wanted to do a video and kind of break it down in a little bit more of a scientific kind of way. Uh, first of all, I do want to reiterate that the frame format that I think is the best to render out of Cinema 4D with, if you're doing any sort of photo reel or kind of uh, a well lit or anything that has any sort of color fidelity that you want to mess with in post, whether it's color grading, compositing, whatnot, is going to be an EXR format. Like that's probably, I, I, I know you've heard me say it a million times, but I'm just going to reiterate that. But if you don't need an EXR, you need you don't need it because you're, you're not doing anything that requires a lot of color fidelity. So what 8-bit format do I render in? We're going to answer all these questions in this video. I break it all down. It's really, really informative. I hope you dig it. Let's jump in. All right, so I figured I'd make this video because it was a really interesting subject that got brought up on Twitter about the best 8-bit image sequence format for playback in After Effects. So I decided I would do some testing and I discovered something kind of interesting. So just to make sure everybody's clear on what I'm running, I'm running After Effects CC, latest version 2015.3. I don't have that much RAM on my machine. I've only got 32 gigs. Uh, I do have solid state drives and um, four GPUs. Uh, so take that for what it's worth. Um, as far as I know, the GPUs aren't going to be doing anything on this. I'm not using any effects. I'm literally just loading in um, a clip and playing it back. Now the clip that I started with was a multi-channel EXR 3D render. Um, it's not composited. It's from a, a job I did not too long ago. And um, I'm just going to play for you the sequence as it came out of Octane, which is a multi, this is a multi-channel EXR, which means that it's got lots of different passes inside of the, um, inside of the frame. And so that's probably why it's going to be a little bit slower than um, some of the other formats, but it is a floating point and has all these different passes built in. So uh, the number you're going to want to watch is going to be up here when I hit um, zero on my uh, number pad, the FPS is what we're paying attention to, the frames per second. So we're getting about average of 2.2, 2.1 playback on this um, HD 1920 by 1080 sequence. Um, and I don't think the, uh, the, I don't think the, um, the screen capture is actually having any, any effect on that because it's pretty similar to what it was before. So about 2.2 is, is the average on that. Now that's got a lot of data in it and it's, and just, you know, so we're all aware the frame sizes of that particular sequence. Um, let me find it. It's right here. Actually, those were pretty big because they have all sorts of passes in them. So those are 32 megs a frame. So I decided to start with that. And then I made different versions of this render um, to see and then brought them back into After Effects to see how fast they were. So the first thing I did is I converted this into a flat EXR, which basically is just got the alpha and the RGB. So it's like taking all the channels out of it. So let's purge our uh, memory here. And we're going to purge all memory. Okay. And then I'm just going to hit zero again. And we're getting real time playback. I mean, it didn't even, it didn't, doesn't struggle to uh, keep up with it at all. Um, let's just do that again, just to make sure that nothing, I'm going to purge all memory and disk cache. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to hit zero. Yeah. We must've had some cache still in there. Um, so we're getting good speed now. We're getting about five FIPS, yeah, 4.5, somewhere in that region, which is pretty good. Okay, so that was just a flat EXR. Now I'm going to look at a floating point TIFF. And again, I'm going to purge all memory. And let's just make sure that's actually 
disk cache as well. Okay, cool. So um, this is the floating point TIFF has the same color space as the um, as the EXRs, but it doesn't have any of the channels, meaning it doesn't have any of the embedded passes in there. Oh, and I forgot to look at the uh, flat EXR size. So the flat EXR size is five meg, which is really small. So the 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 sequence that we're about to look at now, which is the floating point TIFF, which is the same color space as that EXR. Let's look at that one. And this one is 15. So it's like three times the size of that of the flat EXR. All right, so let's look at the speed of the of the floating point TIFF. So about the same, a little bit less, a little bit less than the uh, floating point EXR that was flattened. So that the EXR, the flat EXR is still the winner here. So this is where it gets interesting. So this we've been looking at 16-bit and above. So the last 16-bit and above sequence I made was a DPX, a DPX sequence. And let's look at that. And let's purge all memory in disk cache. Okay. And let's look at the DPX sequence. Yeah, real time. Crazy, right? So DPX format is actually 10-bit. So it's actually not quite, it's somewhere, it sits in between an 8-bit and a 16-bit. A lot of color information. In fact, a lot of colorists use the DPX format when they're doing um, grading. So that's pretty interesting. That is ridiculously fast for this uh, many colors and, the, and this much information. Okay, so um, again, the DPX is the winner on the 16-bit, but you know, if, if we had to look at the size of the DPX, let's check out the size. They're about 10 megs, so they're a little bit, they're quite a bit bigger than our flat EXRs. They're twice the size, but they play back ridiculously fast in After Effects. Um, and usually this has to do with After Effects trying to uh, un, uh, kind of read their compression. So an uncompressed file format is going to read faster in After Effects because it doesn't have to figure out the compression. All right, let's move on to 8 bit because that's really what kind of started this whole thing. Um, some people were saying 8-bit TIFFs were the fastest. Some people were saying PNGs. I was I said PNG just because it's a easy to it's an easy format and it's really small. So let's see what we get out of the TIFFs. So the TIFF format. Let's go ahead and purge everything again. I'm gonna purge that down. Okay, let's just hit play. And it's fast. It's like right away playing back in real time off my solid state drive. That's about what I expected for an 8-bit TIFF. It's uncompressed. It's it's big. So let's see how big that one is. So this is, if we look at the TIFF, the 8-bit TIFF is 7.9 um, megs of, of frame. So pretty big. So let's check out PNG. So the PNG, let's look at that, and let's go ahead and purge all disk cache. And we're going to play the PNG back. Now, the PNG is not quite real time, but it's pretty close. It's actually about, about 15, 16 F FPS, which is pretty darn fast. And the size of the PNG is 1.96 megs. Now, remember, compared to the 8-bit TIFF, which was coming in at 7, that's quite a big difference. Okay, And you're only losing about five frames per second in terms of speed by using the PNG. All right, so the last one up, let's look at the Targa. And so the Targa, let's purge this, and let's purge that down. Okay, that's all purged. Now I'm just gonna hit play on the Targa, okay? Targa is about the same as the PNG. It was almost real time from the get-go. It was actually averaging about 24. So let's look at the size of the Targa. Uh, let's go back. Targa. Doo, 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 doo. Targa was 5.1 megs. So it was about the same size as the TIFF, the 8 bit TIFF, a little bit smaller. So the PNG, as far as like comparing size to speed ratio, I think is still your best bet. 
it is pretty close. It's uh, it's averaging about now. It's averaging more like twenty somewhere in there, fifteen to twenty. Uh, let's purge everything again, and let's hit play. Seventeen, fifteen, a little bit slower on that one. Uh, maybe it's about fifteen. So it really kind of depends. You could do a PNG and have smaller frames and and that take up less size and deal with uh, slightly less frames per second. Or you could render out to DPX like this, which is, this is still kind of mind boggling. Um, and that actually has better color information and plays back, you know, almost uh, immediately in real time, the much, much faster playback. Now the DPX compared to the one uh, meg PNG is not really going to be much of a contest there. So if we look at the DPX, I mean, these are 10 times the size of a PNG. So you really have to ask yourself, like, what's more important, um, saving space on my hard drive or playing back stuff as fast as possible in After Effects? And where does color sit in all of that? How important is color to what you're doing? So for me, if I'm doing 8-bit stuff, I'm generally going to do PNGs just because, I don't know, they're really small and I don't have a giant server, so I try to maintain a, a, I don't try to, I try not to fill up my solid state drives. Um, but uh, now that I'm kind of finding out that DPX loads are the, are this fast, I will definitely be using that format a lot more. So I hope this was informative. Um, I know it was informative for me. Hopefully it'll uh, start to shed some light on um, frame formats and, and what you should be using in After Effects and what's right for the project that you're doing and how much space you have and the color of, the, of what you have uh, in your render or your footage. All of these will weigh on your decision um, on what format to use. But yeah, hope this helped. All right, so I figured I owed this a bit more of a summary because uh, I know that, you know, we talked a lot about all the different formats of testing and whatnot, but I wanted to distill it all down here at the end so that it's really easy to digest. So number one, if you're rendering out of Cinema 4D and you're rendering anything that's, um, you want it to, uh, anything that's not like a flat kind of style and you need to do any sort of color grading or compositing work, your best working, um, your best rendering out as an image sequence as a, uh, an EXR, the half float EXR, and I put the uh, the exact compression type that I prefer loads fastest in most compositing apps, including After Effects. Um, now, this is if you're doing, you know something with a lot of channels or like I said, you're going to do any sort of color grading on stuff. But if you're doing like really flat elements that are really, really simple and you're not going to have to do any of that sort of thing, then you probably are saying, well, I need to, what happens if I need to render 8-bit and you want to conserve drive space? So if you want to render 8-bit and you're really concerned about not filling up your drive with a ton of, of images that are big in terms of file size, then you might want to consider either PNG or Targas because PNGs, they're, they're the good, small file size, widely accepted, web-friendly, the bad. They're slightly slower to RAM preview than an uncompressed file is because After Effects has to basically um, figure out its compression uh, before it can serve you the frame. Uh, Targa with a RLE compression, which is a lossless compression, it's a good file format, smaller than TIFF, not quite as small as a PNG. PNGs are definitely the smallest in terms of file size. Again, the bad for for Targa, just barely slower than a TIFF or DPX, but the color fidelity is still 8-bit. So it's faster at RAM previewing than a PNG, takes up more space than a PNG, but not quite as much space as a TIFF. So need to render 8-bit and you still just want to and you just want a fast RAM preview in AE to hell with the file sizes you don't care about the file sizes you just want the fastest RAM preview in AE possible with an image sequence then you're going to want to do an 8-bit TIFF an 8-bit TIFF uh, is an uncompressed file format so After Effects is just going to load it really fast off of a solid state drive um, it's widely accepted. It's uncompressed. The bad size, bad part about a 8-bit TIFF is they're pretty big. They can be, in terms of file size, they can they can be for, for pretty large. Uh, and the color fidelity is still just 8-bit. What if I want fast RAM preview speeds, good color fidelity, and I don't want it taking up too much space? 
So this is kind of like the best of everything, meaning I want fast speed, color fidelity beyond 8-bit, and I don't want it to be huge and, and take up a ton of space. So that frame format actually is the DPX sequence. It's been around forever. DPX is actually what uh, a lot of color graders use, like I mentioned earlier. The good parts about DPX, fast as hell RAM previews in AE. Great color fidelity, meaning it sits somewhere in between uh, like an 8-bit and a, and a half float. 10-bit um, color is great. Widely accepted in most compositing apps. It's uncompressed. The file size is somewhere between a Targa and a TIFF, usually. Um, and the bad part about this, the file size is slightly larger than 8-bit TIFFs uh, because it's got that extra color depth. But remember, this one was for people that don't care about the file size and want color fidelity and speed. Um, the other last bit about this that's a little bit confusing to people is that DPX sequences often um, are confusing because of their color space. Because they're used by colorists, they have kind of specific uses um, in terms of color space. But if you don't, if you just ignore all that stuff and you don't, you know, use it, then the sequences look fine. Like I, in the render that I did, I just, you know, told it to ignore any sort of color space conversion. Um, all right, so... That's kind of it. So I think we kind of covered everything. So it, like again, um, I hope you found this video useful. Um, and if you have any suggestions about uh, different ways or different file formats, that's listen. There's not well, there's not going to be one file format that everybody's going to use, and like that's the file format. It's all about what you want to do. What's your color rate? Color fidelity to size, file size, to speed in, in After Effects kind of ratio. Like, where do you sit in that, in that like, spectrum? And then you can choose your, 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 your frame format accordingly. But I would do want to reiterate, if you're going to be rendering out of Cinema 4D and it's not something flat, um, then please render out. I would highly recommend rendering out EXR half floats with all of your, your channels embedded, or if you want them to be separate, that's fine too. Um, this is just the most, uh, this, this frame format makes the most sense for doing like really nice renders out of, out of cinema. All right, um, so with that, I will leave you, and I'll catch you next time. Welcome back, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe if you like what you see. We're going to be putting out a lot of great content over the next couple months. You don't want to miss out. Until next time, I'll catch you later.